Welcome back to On Second Thought. That is Terrorist Storm. And I am Brianna Marr with William Joe Wagner and Brad Pugh. Um, We're back with Brad Pugh, a sovereign, not a citizen of the federal government, but a sovereign person under God's law. Uh, I really hope you people go Google Alex Jones Terror Storm is that little clip you were just watching. You really ought to see the whole thing and you will see what the big media, you know, ABC, CBS, CNN, Fox News, you know, Fox News is basically the Nazi government propaganda speaker. You're going to get the kind of travel documents he did, an international driver permit? I'm thinking about it because I was thinking of going for my permit recently, so... In Brianna's case, should she even bother getting a California driver's license? Should she apply right away for a international driving permit? Can she? Can a 17-year-old apply for an international driving permit? Well, she can apply for one, but until uh, she reaches the age of majority, she is still under her parents' wings and covered by their status. So if they're still in contractual nexus, that's where she's going to be. Uh, and again, I, I would tell people all the time, if you are in contract with Caesar... You render unto Caesar. If you're not in contract with him, then don't render unto him. What do you make of that scripture, Brad, where um, the apostles and Jesus are traveling and they get to the uh, toll road guy who's collecting the toll tax and Jesus says to one of his disciples, go down to the Sea of Galilee and pull a fish out. In oh. the mouth of the fish you will find a coin and will pay the tax. Okay, I'm familiar with that. Now, what people need to understand is verbal contracts are every bit as binding, especially in the heavenly courts, as a written contract. And when they came to Peter, who basically, if you read the scriptures, had a history of shooting off his big fat mouth when he shouldn't, and he says, doesn't your master pay the temple tax? And he off the cuff said, well, sure he does, just to avoid a conflict. Then he walked back in the house and he was confronted by Jesus Christ for that remark. And what he told Peter was, tell me something, Peter. Uh, as far as the taxes, who pays them? Who pays tribute? Is it a conquered people or is it the sons? And he says, well, foreigners, a conquered people. He says, then the sons are exempt. But so we do not offend. In other words, because you shot off your big fat mouth and obligated yourself and me you go and you catch a fish and you take the money out of the fish's mouth. I want people to notice something. Jesus did not demand that money be taken out of their own treasury, nor did, were the other disciples uh, obligated by that, only Peter and Jesus Christ, because that was the nature of that verbal contract. Interesting. Well, you gave me a very interesting perspective on that. I've often you know, questioned myself on that scripture. I always came to the conclusion that, you know, whose image was on the coin? It was Caesar's image. So they took for it was Caesar's and gave it to Caesar. They didn't take something out of the uh, God's treasury and give it to Caesar. They took a coin that had Caesar's face on it or image and they gave it back to Caesar. And why you had to go and pull it out of the mouth of a fish? What do you make out of that? Well, what I would make out of it, not being a, a scriptural scholar, but being a man who has read the Bible several times, uh, they were investing the fruits of of what they actually were. Remember, Peter was a fisherman. So basically Christ said, go invest of your labor. All right? Mm -hmm. Christ was a miracle worker. So Christ put in his part and made it possible for him to get his share of the tax paid. Peter put in his part by fishing. That's mm -hmm. the only thing, that's the conclusion I can come to. 